contrarian, leave it to badass, contrarian badass, Reggie Middleton. She called the housing crash. She called the collapse of Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers and the crisis in the Eurozone banking system. Bitcoin. What is it? Well, Bitcoin has been popular in the media, 2013, 2014, died out somewhat 2015, came back 2016. Um, everybody has an opinion. Uh, most of the establishment has poo-pooed Bitcoin, um, primarily, in my opinion, due to ignorance, uh, probably followed by its representation in the media. And you know, if you understand the business model of the media, they are having a problem um, transforming their business models from the old legacy uh, media of the last several decades, newspaper, television, radio, to an internet uh, paradigm. The internet paradigm is a protocol-based platform, IP, internet protocol. When the internet came into play, it transformed almost everything. Every pos potential possible business was affected by the internet, media being one of them. Margins compressed, access expanded dramatically, um, everybody was able to publish, and friction was reduced significantly. Remember this as I move forward. So with that being said, uh, margins compressed, media became much more aggressive. It's now about impressions, uh, much less about actual fact and fact checking, more about how many people or eyeballs get to see whatever content is put out. That's the metric that you use to gauge the pricing for your advertising, which is the primary source of most media, since they can't charge for content because information is so ubiquitous. The issue is true quality information, knowledge, actual value is not that ubiquitous, so you can't charge for it. Alas, it's hard to come by. So, I digress. Media, very aggressive. They put up things, uh, stories about Bitcoin, child porn, Silk Road, theft, hack, etc. It affects the perception of Bitcoin to those who really don't have the time, the wherewithal, the resources, or the willingness to do their homework. And so, Bitcoin has been maligned. I'm here to tell you, Bitcoin is the best thing since sliced bread. Okay, not just the technology, the blockchain, but Bitcoin itself. You see, because many people don't understand the difference. Bitcoin is a phenomenal technology through the blockchain, a breakthrough, um, heralded in 2009, but it has grown and it is now its own um, platform. Bitcoin is an economic network, okay, and it is the strongest of its kind in the world with the second coming in of distant, distant one ninth, and that would be most likely the Ethereum network. Now, we have many other uh, platforms and networks that are in alpha stage, concept stage, prototype stage, um, early, early, early beta. You know, Bitcoin could be said to be coming out of beta now, by far the most heartened, um, time proven, tested, uh, and secure, and has the largest uh, network effect. Now, moving forward, um, going through all that, you have to ask, what is Bitcoin? And most people would say, especially for meeting, reading the media or talking to your typical bank exec, Bitcoin is a digital currency. That means close to nothing. All currencies and almost all developed nations are digital. Reach in your pocket right now, you tell me how much money you have in your pocket. If you are a US citizen uh, or European, EU, pound, British, etc. You pull up anywhere between nothing to a couple of hundred dollars, a couple of hundred euro for the average person. Is that your total um, asset base in terms of currency? Probably not. Most of your money is sitting in a centralized wallet, which a lot of people call their bank account, in a digital form, digital currency. That's everything, wands, pesos, euros, dollars, etc. So if everything's a digital currency, what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is autonomy. Bitcoin is the audacity of access. And that's another reason why many outside of the media 
above the media in terms of the hierarchical ladder of influence in this world would poo poo Bitcoin because it is the audacity of access. It is autonomy. If you do not need those who profit and benefit as the gatekeeper, the middleman between you and your digital assets, then they cannot profit and you can act on your own. This destroys their business model and there is no reason in the world where they should not only condone it, but not even accept it. So that's it in a nutshell. I will demonstrate the difference between the other uh, developed nations, sovereign digital currencies and Bitcoin. Here we have 20 US dollars. Okay. It's a $20 bill. Sovereign digital currency, US dollars. Okay. Federal Reserve note. This is pretty much static. This is Bitcoin. Yes. So as Bitcoin currently trading at about mm, somewhere around $640 a coin. Okay. Up from less than a penny of a coin in 2009. Okay. What makes this different from this? Let me explain to you. Okay. This is programmable. It's malleable. I could take this and this can be one Bitcoin, one BTC, trade $640 US dollars. Or I can take this and I can make it represent one share of Apple stock by using a scripting program in a smart contract platform, such as our own Veritasium, patent pending, the first capital markets application of blockchain technology ever in this world. Okay, we cleared our first contract in December of 2013, a digital swap. We were the first to apply for patent protection and we were the first to put such an advanced application of smart contract technology to use in the capital markets. So now we take this one BTC we inject the data feed into it, tell it to act like one share of Apple. We have one entity, Peter on one side, who wants to send in 117 US dollars into the blockchain, right? To wager against Apple going up, I mean, against Apple going down. So he wants to buy one share of Apple. We have Paul on the other side, who sends in $117 worth of Bitcoin into the blockchain. He did the same thing, sorry, with the Bitcoin, wagering that Apple will go down. They trade exposure of one share of Apple. They lock into a Veritasium style smart contract. Apple goes up in price 10%. This guy's account is 10% richer. That guy's account is 10% poor. Yes, you can do that with Bitcoin. Or you could turn around and say, instead of one BTC, you want this to represent one US dollar. Now, your Bitcoin represents one dollar. Very similar to this. You could change the amount to 210 US dollars. Or you could change your programming on the contract to say this represents GLD, the gold ETF, or treasury yields, or the peso euro pair, or to you use your imagination, you can actually trade Google stock for Facebook stock. He's, he sends in $200 worth of Bitcoin. He sends in $200 worth of Bitcoin into a wallet. They go into a smart contract. The capital is stored on the blockchain. He's long Facebook, short Google. He's sh uh, short Facebook, long Google. Facebook goes up 20%. Google goes down 20%. His account is 40% richer. His account is 40% poorer. Yes, all that can be done with Bitcoin. And I'm just getting started. So, 
the difference between dumb fiat currency that is held in digital form and Bitcoin, which is basically a blank canvas that could be scripted in any way you want. You can take these contracts and read a very long, complex contract or a simple contract, one for one. That is Bitcoin. So anybody who says that Bitcoin doesn't have any value, intrinsic value, has no idea what they're talking about. Just the mere fact you can do that is significant value. Now, when these entities send in their value, they don't go to a broker, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs. They don't go to a bank such as Citibank or Wells Fargo and have, you know, 140 extra accounts open, you know, 13 credit cards that they didn't know of. But hey, they don't do any of that. What they do is they have their own wallet. They send the entity, the capital into the blockchain with a veritation wallet scripted according to their desires of making that Bitcoin act like stocks, bonds, interest rates, forex, currencies, um, commodities, or even an indice, indices or index. It can act like real estate. It can act like cars, anything. They do this without a middleman. No banks, no exchanges, no brokers, no regulators, nobody. That's powerful. They send this capital and they send this capital at very, very low expense. They don't have to pay for wires. They don't have to pay for transfers. When the contract is over, it usually clears in 10 to 45 minutes versus T plus three days for a stock exchange. The expenses are measured in basis points, not percent. Phenomenal. Now, does Bitcoin have any value? You think about it. 